Welcome to September's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is reachable nodes in a subdivided graph. You are given an undirected graph, the original graph, with n nodes labeled 0 to n minus 1. You decide to subdivide each edge into a graph into a chain of nodes with the number of new nodes varying between each edge. Now the graph is given as a 2D array of edges where edges i have u, v, which represent the nodes, as well as the count which is going to be the total number of new nodes that you will subdivide the edge into. Note that count equaling zero means that the, the, you cannot subdivide the edge. To subdivide the edge of UV, replace it with count plus one new edges. Uh, yeah, and the new nodes are going to be x1, x2, x whatever. Uh, so you can see, like this example here, we're going to add these new nodes between zero and one. So zero and one has 10 new nodes here. You count that up and 0 to 2 has one new node. We can also have zero new nodes, meaning there's just going to be a normal edge here. Okay, so in this new graph, you want to know how many nodes are reachable from the node 0, where a node is reachable if the distance is max moves or less. So we're going to be given some sort of number, max moves. Here it's going to be 6. And we can see we can reach every single node, right? We can, well, but the question is, how many of the new subnodes can we reach as well? So with six max moves, we can see that we can reach 13 total nodes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. Okay, so we definitely know this is gonna be a path finding other algorithm or a travel traveling algorithm of some sort. But the thing is, do we wanna create these new nodes completely? And Answer to that is no, we definitely do not want to do that. We don't want to add more complexity to our graph. What we'll do instead is try to visualize this as a weighted graph. <clears throat> Each one of these edges <clears throat> has some number of nodes between them, right? <clears throat> and we're going to call that weight. That's going to be our weight. And that, <clears throat> and that way, what we'll do is have some sort of data structure that calculates the number of moves it takes to get to each node. Now, if we have that, then we can go through our edges and calculate the number of nodes between each one of the edges that we can reach. And uh, it gets a little bit complicated as we go along, but let's see by step by step how we'll do this. So the first thing we want to do is we are going to create a graph, and this will just be a default dict. And let's see, should I make it a list or a set? Eh, it doesn't really matter. I'll make it a list. So for the edges, for source target, this is bidirectional, but we'll just call it source target. And there are no multiple edges in our graph, okay? So that's actually big. Uh, knowing that there's not more than one edge between two nodes here, uh, we could just use the weight in edges. And we're going to say graph of S. Let's append the T. <clears throat> but not just the T, we're going to make this a tuple. And we want to add in the weight in here as well. We're going to add one so that we also count its own node. And we'll say graph of t dot append from source to w plus t, w plus one. Oh, no, I don't I have to make this a tuple. Okay, so now we have this graph, it's a weighted graph, and this way we can calculate whether we've been able to reach all these other edges or not. Uh, so one thing that we do need to have is, we're gonna have a data structure here, an array of floats all or integers rather, it's going to be infinites at first, multiply it by n, because n is given to us. So each one of these represents, what this represents? This represents, um, let's see, how many steps it took to get there. Now, why does that matter? Well, if we knew how many steps it took to get to each one of these nodes, rather the minimum number of steps, because there could be multiple steps, uh, you know, ways to get there. Since we know we have to start at the zero node, then we can actually calculate how many of these sub nodes could we reach. Because we know what, how many nodes are between each one of these edges. So depending on how many moves it took us to get here, if we subtract the number of max moves with the number of moves it took there, then we could reach however many nodes, right? So say that it took well, we can see it took two steps to get here. So that means we have four steps left, right? So that means we can take care of all everything in, in the middle here. We can 
have one, two, and we'll still have two left, right? Uh, but here, with one, we can see the minimum number of steps it'll take to get there is, what, six? One, two, three, four, five, I'm sorry, five. So that means between one to zero, the maximum number, number of nodes we can reach is gonna be one, right? Six minus five is equals one. Okay, so that's gonna be why this matters. Um, let's keep that comment there. And what I'm gonna do here is a breadth first search. We'll have a heap and start at zero with zero steps. And we're gonna do a right breadth first search. We'll say while there's a heap, let's update our distance amount. Okay, so while heap, right? So let's first pop off from our heap. What is it gonna be? It's gonna be node and number of steps so far, I guess, so far. So heap pop. I'm sorry, that's not right. Heap pop. In our heap. And we want to see all our neighbors. So for we'll call it next in say next as well as extra steps, I guess. Extra well I'll call it just steps in graph of C node. Let's see, total steps will equal uh, steps plus so far, right? Now, as long as this number of total steps, if total steps, uh, if this is less than the distance to our next, then let's update it. We'll say distance to next is gonna now equal total steps and I guess we'll need to add to our heap. Heap push uh, to our heap a tuple of the next as well as the total steps that we've taken so far. And that should be it. So let's look at what our distance looks like at this point. Let's see if that looks right. Oh, hmm. Okay, so one thing I think I need to do actually is set the zero to zero first because uh, that need, doesn't take care of itself. This has to be equal to zero. Because the very first node, we know there's no steps to be taken. That's where we start. So zero, five, two, does that make sense? It, it does, right? Because uh, to get to node one, it takes five steps. One, two, three, four, five. And to get to node two, it takes two steps. One, two. Okay, so I think we have our distance. Now this is where the hard part begins. Okay. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. For, um, let's be source target weight and edges. We want to calculate whether we could reach it or not first, right? And we also want to calculate how many in the nodes in between can we get or not. Uh, so let's think. We're gonna call this weight one and weight two. Now weight one is just gonna equal the distance of source and the number of max moves that we have. So max moves subtracted by distance source. This is how many we have left, okay? So that's gonna be weight one and this will be weight two. So one thing to note is this could actually be negative right? Because it totally could be like this distance it takes to get this node is like 100. And if that means it's negative, then we actually know we can't even reach that. So we're not going to even care about that. Uh, what we're going to do is say, get the max between 0 and w1. And we're going to just add these two. We're going to say max of 0, negative 1, 0, and negative 2, w2. We'll add these to our output like this. Now, obviously, this means there could be overlap, right? We could have this one reaching the whole thing and this one also being able to reach the whole thing. So we actually need to subtract the, the overlap there. Uh, so to do that, uh, well, if these both are greater than greater or equal to zero and this is greater than or equal to zero, I actually think total steps go like that. Uh, if that's the case, then we actually need to subtract. What we'll subtract is, let's see,
the weight that we've seen so far. Oh, okay, okay. So we add these together and then minus weight like this, I believe. And that should take care of the ones that are overlapping. Gosh, I hope that's right. Now, one last thing. We actually took care of all the nodes in between the edges, but we haven't taken care of the nodes itself. Uh, so to take care of that, we'll just say, all right, uh, for, uh, let's say, n and let's say d and distance. Okay, if distance is less or equal to max moves, then we're going to count these up. So let's say one, and we'll just count the sum of these. These are all the nodes that we could reach. We'll also add that to our output. Yeah. Finally, return our output. And let's see if this works. Ooh, okay, um, let's see. Output. Put reference. Must have misspelled something. No. Oh. Okay, I got to set that. All right. Nope, that doesn't work either. <sighs> okay, let's see here. Distance. If D. Oh, gosh, I knew I was so close. Alright, so maybe it's not the max of these. One plus W two. It's like max zero this, maybe. Okay, there we go. So, so my fault. Um, we wanna <laughs> basically we wanna make sure this is not negative and we're subtracting uh, we already know these are both positive, so uh, this would mean it's long. Actually, do I even need this? Oh, uh, whatever. It, it seems to work, so we'll just go with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So, time complexity. <laughs> um, I believe it's n log n, I believe, because of this, because of this um, breadth of search. I'm not entirely sure. I believe it's on login. Let's just say it's on login. <laughs> uh, could be something else. All right. So that concludes today's challenge or today's problem. Uh, I guess I'll have an announcement. I've been noticing that the weekend problems have been getting pretty hard. And that's unfortunate for me because I don't have a lot of time on the weekends. And I'm also finding that I'm God, wanting to transition my channel a little bit to telling more stories rather than call, just being a very dry, cut and dry, legal solving channel because you know I'm, there's a lot of other channels that do what I do better than what I do and uh, ultimately I, I don't want this just to be about you know me being all academic trying to exp solve these algorithms. I also want to tell, tell stories and uh, talk about my journeys. Uh, so I'll have to think about that more. Stay tuned and I'll really start to think about how else I can transition my channel here. But thanks for watching my channel, everyone. I really appreciate it. And remember, seriously, do not trust me. I don't know anything. <laughs>